was in an interesting conversation earlier. And the question was, who is the best boxer in MMA? The reason that turns into a struggle is we must clarify what you're asking. Are we asking who within the rules of MMA boxes the best? Or are we asking who is an MMA fighter who could leave the unified rules, go over to the Queensberry side of things, and do the best? And that's how I've got to interpret it. And it is a very different answer. It, it, who's the best wrestler in MMA? And I know what you guys are thinking. You know, well, Cejudo or Yoel Romero or Daniel Cormier. Wrong, wrong, and wrong. George St. Pierre. But who in MMA could go and wrestle the best? Well, then you had the answer right. Of course, it would be Cejudo or it'd be the guys that would use the wrestling setups from the wrestling posture. So I'll give you my list. First off, boxing skills. I, re- I got Max. And this order is not in order, but I do believe that Max Holloway, okay, he starts everything out with a jab, follows it with a cross. Sometimes he'll d- dig to the body. It's a rarity that he will throw a kick. Very similar to Stipe. Stipe has a great kick, but he doesn't throw it very often. It's for all the reverse reasons that Justin Gaethje did not make my list. Justin Gaethje is such a great stand-up fighter with very good hands, but he's so leg kick heavy that if we're taking the kicks out, much like we're taking the grappling out, I have to go with Holloway. And another thing, you will always hear sports guys in combat talk about who has the reach. Now, we'll even call it a reach advantage, but if you follow the history of MMA or of boxing, every single fight, one guy has a longer reach than the other one. And if you follow the history of it, you're not going to find more wins for the guy with the longer reach. I don't ever know where that became an advantage. Unless you're one of the rare guys that knows how to use it. A lot of people will even dismiss the success of John Jones by saying, well, he has longer arms than everybody. He's got a built-in advantage. Well, John understands how to use that range, much like the hitman Tommy Hearns understood how to use that range, much like Max Holloway understands how to use that range going forward, going backward, going laterally. It's, It's a big deal. Few guys with those long arms know how to use it. Max most certainly does. I put Frankie Edgar on here because Clayton Hires says that Frankie Edgar is the best boxer in all of MMA. I do think when you look at Frankie's footwork, I think when you look at his combinations, nothing he doesn't throw anything. There's never a jab with nothing coming behind it. Everything is at least a three-beat combo. Bop, 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 and he's stepping around and he's moving. That's one of the big differences. You'll find guys that can throw great punches and they can even get to the target. If you can throw a good punch and you can land it, by the way, good for you. You're a major step in the right direction. But if you stand around when you're done and you look at your work, now you get hit back. Frankie, bump, 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 I touch you. And then he moves so he doesn't get touched back. I've got Frankie Edgar on the list. I have to put Francis. I have to put Francis because he is just so damn powerful. And I can't tell you he follows all the rules. I wouldn't even tell you that if you could have any coach in all of MMA to teach you boxing, you should go learn the skills of Francis Ngannou. I I don't know about his fundamentals, but I can tell you he can make up for it by his ability to step in there, start trading, and ultimately have that ungodly power. And Connor speaks for himself, right? I mean, he is the only guy that actually tested this theory. Who can leave the unified rules behind, go over to the Queensberry rules, and do great? And you have to put Connor on there. He's another guy that understands reach, but he also understands counterfighting. He also understands movements that are going to freeze your opponent. Those are called setups. But a lot of times when we see those, we think the guy's being arrogant. Anderson Silva is a master of setups. He will do things that cause a distraction to freeze you like the Medusa. You freeze into stone, boom, he attacks you. People think he's out there being arrogant or he's being cocky or he's showboating or he's clowning. He's doing none of those things. He's using movements to make to make you stop. Not everything just has to be a flinch to get you go. Oh, oh, oh. So before you throw a punch, there's other things you can do. Go see Roy Jones Jr., for example, also called cocky, also called arrogant. No, those were just movements to set you up. Connor's great at those. I mean, sometimes he will do the traditional movement, the traditional shoulder roll, traditional head bob, tr- traditional hip shift. He'll also put his hands behind his back and start yelling at you to garner a Medusa moment where you freeze and he goes and attacks. This is my list. Other great ones on there. 
But for the best boxers, if I had to bet who could go into an actual boxing tournament, into professional boxing, making it up the ranks, making up the ranks the furthest and fastest, I'm going Max, I'm going Frankie, I'm going Francis, and I'm going McGregor.